Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, Conor Clinch's success in the fashion photography world has seen him work with Gucci, Burberry and Nike. But how did this Irishman, who is now based in Paris, create such a name for himself? Well, we're about to find out. Connor, you were listed as one of Ireland's top innovators, but where did your love for photography and creativity come from? Morning, Carl. Thanks for having me on. I guess I started at quite a young age. I got my first camera when I was around 14 years old. And at that time, I was just kind of obsessed with the internet. I was obsessed with looking at images online. And that's what really drew me into photography, was kind of having that possibility of being able to build that vision and that world yourself and putting it out there. You know, it was kind of just like creating a bit of a fantasy land in your head and um, being able to publish that to lots of people around the world. That was what kind of drew me in and was quite exciting for me. When did you decide to pursue this passion on a professional basis? I guess I kind of fell into it, you know. I grew up on the north side of Dublin and I guess I didn't really know at the time that there was a, a fashion industry in Ireland as such. Online, I was always looking at photographers abroad in New York and London. And then it was when I was like 16, 17, I started to kind of look at some images that Irish photographers were producing and the small industry there was in Ireland. And I just really wanted to be part of that, you know, the industry at home. Um, So then I started kind of sending my work out to different brands in Ireland um, and Soon then I got, I think I had my first Brown Thomas campaign around that time. I started working with different magazines in Ireland and uh, different brands and department stores here. So, yeah, and then it kind of took off from there. So talk to us about your career journey and how you made a name for yourself in the world of professional fashion photography. Well, I guess I started off when I was quite young in Ireland, really focused on wanting to better my skills as a photographer. When I was 18, I got an incredible opportunity to work with the photographer Rankin in uh, London. And um, that was for a a TV show on Sky One, which aired when I was very young. Um, And that can, you know, be very, very helpful. And also it can be a bit of a hindrance because in the fashion industry, if you're associated with any kind of TV or reality TV, you know, it's not not a very good look. But it was was an incredible experience working with Rankin and, and, and building that. Um, knowledge and, and, and having his expertise. Um, and then I'm, I moved to London straight after that when I was 18 and I was there for just under 10 years working with different brands. It was a struggle at the start, definitely. I think, you know, uh, maybe people think if you get these opportunities quite young, you just kind of walk straight into an, an amazing career, but it wasn't like that at all. It was, you know, I think in fashion industry, it's not all just about what you know again it's like the the industry is is just there's so many photographers and you really have to stand out and kind of make you know make it have a strong vision um so that took a time that took a long time and i'm still working at that i feel like you can never really stop working on that you always need to you always need to want to do better um so then i moved to paris last year and and the industry here is even more competitive. <laughs> so, you know, you're oh. up against some of the biggest photographers in the world. Um, so, yeah, I'm here now, and I'm, I, I I presented my first exhibition last year. Um, I showed it here in Paris, and um, that was an incredible experience. It was it was really nice to work on something personal for a while that wasn't just, you know, trying to fit, trying to fit, fulfill a brief as such and trying to, trying to work to, like, what a client needs. Um so it was nice to just give myself that creative freedom for a while and to put on a show that I was really proud of. Tell us more about your exhibition, Sanctuary. What was the inspiration for it? Well, the reason I bought a camera when I was younger was because I was obsessed with underwater, obsessed with marine life and the sea. And I owned a little, like, small, I had a little small kind of family aquarium in my home. And I got a camera to take pictures of the fish. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that, I, that kind of drew me into it. Um, and then I, I, you know, had this obsession with photography. And of course, as you know, back then, my mom was always like, I was, you know, grew up with my mom and she was like, ah, it's just another phase. You'll grow out of that. Um, and I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I've always loved the scene. I've always, always loved kind of, 
um, underwater. And it's just the kind of mystery of what's, yeah, what's what's in that. And it's it's also the silence of of being underwater that I really like. It's the quietness of it all. Um, and so I wanted to do something that uh, kind of brought me back to why I began photography, really. Um, so yeah, so I had this uh, incredible opportunity to work with the Natural History Museum. Um, the curator um, of Mollusk, uh, Andrea Salvador, who actually has a book herself. I, I bought her book and I was kind of reading up and studying on the different types of species um, that she was fond of. And it was just really interesting to understand the different properties of shells. And, you know, they're not just beautiful creatures. Um, they have incredible properties. Um and that was what really fascinated me and drew me into that. So I worked with the with the curator, Andrea, for a couple of months on researching and developing the idea um, alongside a team of like a set designer um, and a, a couple of my team, like assistants. Um, and yeah, we, we, we put this, we put the show together in around a year. And of course, you've Thank worked you. with global brands such as Nike, Burberry and Gucci. But what does a typical day on a photo shoot look like for you? A day on a shoot is very varied. It can be, it usually is very hectic and very long. But I think a common misconception of people's idea of photographers is that they just shoot photographs every day. Um, that's not the case. Like, you know, 80, 90 percent of the work is the pre and the post-production now, I'd be working from meeting with a client to presenting um, a concept to a client to then working on the pre-production for, you know, almost a month or two before the actual shoot. And then once you do the shoot, then it's the post-production, um, you know, the artworking and everything else. So uh, as much as it is about, you know, it's exciting on the day and it, 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 it's great working with these brands in the day but a lot of it is is researching and a lot of it is developing concepts which is what I really enjoy as well I think that's what what's really fun about it and what's your concept development process um I guess it's different I think it's just you know even going back to kind of finding ideas from outside of 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 photography in the world that I'm that I'm in all the time, you know, it's kind of looking at different things. Like right now I'm working with um, a, a very famous uh, ballet brand. And so I'm trying to kind of immerse myself in, in that world of researching dancers. And I, I mean, I don't know anything about ballet and just kind of like find inspiration that way and develop concepts that way. And also not everything is online. You know, I, last year I was one of my uh, assistants was studying at CSM and I went into the, to the library there with her to research on a project. And, you know, there's so much like back issues of magazines and, and photo books that you can find images in that just you don't see anywhere online. Um, so yeah, it's important to look out there and not just, on Pinterest or on Instagram and you know Google and, and finding things online, you can you can you can find a lot more if you just kind of go out into the world and do some physical research that way. Increasingly now, most of your work is aimed at the social media channels. So how has mm. that impacted your approach to the work over the years? It's such a shame, you know. I was only thinking about this the other day because. I was working on a project and I can be really meticulous about attention to detail, especially when it comes down to the post-production. Um, and someone said to me, oh, she won't, she won't notice that. People will only be looking at it on a small screen. And I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, and it, when it comes down to my personal work as well, like seeing the exhibition in print and seeing it on that beautiful paper, the quality of the detail is just next level. And that just doesn't come across. On, on, on a digital screen um, as big as that digital screen is that quality still doesn't come across and it's such a shame nowadays so I think that's why I think print is still really important you know print portfolios print magazines photo books exhibitions but of course if you're working with, with clients and brands um, nowadays um, brands want more and more kind of things to be delivered you know you don't just have your campaign you've also got uh You've got your main campaign images and then you've got your social images and then they want TikToks and Reels and everything else. So, you know, it's it's a lot more for a lot less. Um, but 
you always have to still do personal work and still remember why you're a photographer because you can get sucked in by that stuff and kind of lose the passion for it. In terms of the style of fashion photography today, what's in vogue in that respect? I think it's very varied. You know, some people like the hyper real, almost CGI look, and then you'll have other other kind of areas of the industry that are more interested in in a very stripped back, very kind of natural, kind of raw type of image. Um, so I guess it kind of depends. You know, there's there's so many different brands out there. There's constantly new new photographers and new brands. People want different things. I guess the unfortunate trend right now is that commercial brands just want more content for a lot less. So I feel like the quality of work is going down slightly, which is such a shame. Um, I think, you know, big companies are choosing quantity over quality where it should be the other way around. Um, I think quality always shows and always shines true. Um, When you put, you know, when you put a lot of passion into something, it, it really does shine true. So um, it's a shame that, that people are, are choosing quantity over quality. But I guess, you know, in this day and age, you've got to hit those, hit those targets. <laughs> and Connor, on the topic of new technology, what impact is artificial intelligence going to have on the work of a professional fashion photographer? Oh, I think we're all asking ourselves the same question. You know, I think it's really great because nowadays when I'm researching and developing concepts and ideas, I use a lot of AI because I can't, sometimes I can't find what's in my head. So if I can describe it and if I can tell a machine, this is what I want and it can produce a sort of an image of what's in my head and what I want to produce, then it kind of helps me to communicate that idea better. Um, so in terms of, of developing concepts, um, creating kind of vision boards, AI is really, really great for that. Um, and so is chat GBT. You know, I'm, 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 I was never really good at that word. That's why I chose photography. So it's great to, when you're communicating to brands, especially when you're working on, uh, when you're working on creative decks, it's really good to kind of be able to put that vision into words. Um, yeah. So it's really, really good at communicating ideas. Um, but I don't think it's going to take over. I think, you know, there's always that want for that natural touch, that natural human touch. Um, so I don't think I don't think AI is going to be able to top that, but who knows? So what's next for Conor Clinch? What's next? So um, I just exhibited my debut um exhibition here in Paris uh, last year so I'm I really want to take that to Ireland and take it to London so I guess right now I'm just looking for the right opportunity to do that um, and the right people to collaborate and partner with um, on, on, on kind of touring that exhibition um, so that's kind of what I'm working on now I, I'd love to in the next couple of years uh, after this project sanctuary um, has a little bit more of a show than than work on my next personal project but right now uh i'm just taking it step by step and seeing balancing that commercial work with my exhibition and um see where it takes me i guess and finally for any listeners that may have aspirations to pursue a career in the creative sector what advice have you got for them if you're starting out in photography don't put everything out there too soon I think maybe that is one of the mistakes that I've made and and that I'm learning from is that you never you never know everything. You're constantly learning new things. I would say probably the best approach to do is less of the academic route, although I was never really into school, but maybe assisting and getting an apprenticeship with a photographer that you really admire is a good first step. And just wait a couple of years, you know, build your knowledge, build your skill, really focus on what you want to produce. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Connor Clinch, world-renowned fashion photographer. And I'd like to thank Connor for telling us about life behind the lens. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.